Okay, it's time to get started again. For those that haven't been into the room or been looking at Shed for the last five minutes, we have replaced the original talk that we are going to have now with Adam Cordell, uh, and we have replaced that with Mikhail Spachak from Czech Republic. Uh, I'm absolutely sure this is going to be just as good as a talk as the one Adam was planning, and uh, this is about disclosing password hashing policies. Uh, Michal had been with us before at PasswordsCon up to several times. Um, and uh, yeah, take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Michael, or you can just call me Michal in Czech if anybody here speaks Czech. Anybody here speaks Czech? Oh yeah, my girlfriend, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, my talk is about uh, disclosing password hashing policies and by that I mean, you know, uh, companies who are storing um, user passwords, they probably should do something to them, something really nice, not something nasty, and they should tell us um, or they should tell their users what they do to the password. So, I'm going to talk about um, who's doing, who, already, who has already done that um, and how they do that and uh, stuff like this. So, the duct tape here is um, just, you know, if you don't want to disclose any, anything, just put it over your mouth. So that's why it's on the first slide. And yeah, let's just go. So um, please raise your hands who have uh, seen sometimes a message like this when you are trying to register. Your password must be 6 to 20 characters. Please raise your hand. Oh my god, it's everyone almost. Cool. <laughs> now, uh, one more raising hands. Uh, who has been already wondering why? Please raise your hands who was wondering why they do this. OK, cool. Me as well, of course. So you're not alone. There are people also wondering why actually companies are you know, um, putting password policies like this, that the password must be maximum 20 characters. So uh, sometimes they are just tweeting, asking the companies why they do that. Like this guy um, who I know, he asked Tripit, like, why do they um, require him to have the password uh, exactly 9 to 64 characters long? So he was wondering why do they do that, and he asked, he tweeted at them. Um, so people sometimes do that. Most of the times, they just uh, don't get any answer. <laughs> Companies just don't reply at all. Well, um, sometimes the reason is that just the companies don't know why they do that. Uh, because um, what happened to me once when I asked, uh, that the guy who actually set up the rules, he already left the company. So the company didn't know what, why do they uh, limit the length of the password. And they tried to fetch the information for me, but they failed. So uh, most of the times, um, you just don't get any, any answer if you ask, which is kind of uh, bad. Sometimes people are wondering, or actually they are afraid, that when the company is limiting the length of the passwords, that they are storing it in, in a plain text in the database. Because if you limit the passwords to, say, 64 characters, um, they are afraid, the users are afraid, that the company is limiting uh, the length of the password because they are storing the passwords in a database in a column which is 64 characters wide, and they just cannot fit anymore. So uh, sometimes users are afraid that the company is storing passwords in plain text if they limit the length of the passwords. It might be true, and it might not. It actually doesn't reveal anything because sometimes the rules are there for just whatever reason, but it's not the the password storage. So, but it might be true, it might not, so um, yeah. Uh, this, is especially, this is especially true when there is a password breach or database breach or database leak. Um, in that very moment, the people are uh, more wondering actually, and they are asking how the company is storing their password, so if they store it in a really bad way or if they store it in a secure way. Uh, this is a, I have a story from uh, Shotbow servers. Shotbow is a, is a Minecraft servers, or yeah, is a company running Minecraft servers, and they got breached, um, I think, a few months ago. So uh, they just announced it on, on their forum, and people started wondering. For example, like this guy, uh, Frost J, he asked, um, what hashing algorithm was used for storing the passwords? 
because uh, the original announcement said only that uh, the attackers got uh, hold of um, you know one-way encrypted passwords, nothing else. So he was wondering what hashing algorithm was used for storing the passwords. He asked on a public forum, and yeah, so he got really interesting answers, like this one from another member of the of the forum. Yeah, and uh, thanks, Bruce, from passwordresearch.com for sending me this, so I can use it in my talk. Um, yeah, if they told you that, there would be no point in the encryption, and there is a headbang uh, emoji. So, <laughs> yeah, um, let's just not go into details here because you know hashing and encryption is something different, and Kerenkov's principle. And yeah, let's just let's move on. <laughs> well, uh, the official answer <laughs> was this one. It wasn't much better. They <laughs> said that, uh, don't worry, the passwords were hashed and solid and managed professionally. <laughs> uh, no idea what does it mean. They didn't specify the algorithm, but they just said it was managed, uh, solid, and hashed professionally. Um, I'll publish my slides, then there is a link if you want to verify it and check that and comment on that, maybe. <laughs> I don't recommend that, but yeah. So luckily, there are companies who are actually not afraid to completely disclose their password hashing policies. Yeah, I'll wait with the next slide for you, Per. Yeah, uh, luckily there are companies who are really not afraid to disclose complete details what they are doing to uh, user passwords. Like, for example, Facebook. This is a uh, this is a screen from uh, Alec Muffet's talk from Passwords 14 from Norway. Which was uh, the talk was about Facebook password hashing policies and um, you know authentication and everything. So this is a this is a slide from the from his talk, and this is what Facebook does to their passwords. Um, they do a lot of things to the passwords, but they have the reason for that. Uh, seriously, just I recommend to watch the talk because uh, he's talking about that like for I don't know 40 minutes or something. So um, yeah. They use several layers of that, but uh, at the core of it, there's a script here and some of some HMAX here. They have reason for that, so I will not, uh, I will not go into details. Uh, seriously, just watch the talk. And, but this is completely what they do to the, to the user passwords, and they are not afraid to disclose it, and they are not afraid to tell us. Um, there are other companies uh, who are not afraid to tell us what they do to, the, to their passwords. For example, like, uh, like LastPass. They just, uh, they have it also, uh, yeah, Facebook, Facebook did that uh, in a talk, so it's not somewhere on their side, it's not on facebook.com, it's just in a, in a talk by a security guy from Facebook. Uh, LastPass, they, they publish it on their side, and they say that LastPass utilizes the PBK day something, um, with show something else, uh, to turn your master password into the encryption key. They got more details there as well. Uh, this is just a this is just a short uh, short text copied from from uh, from the site. So they are also not afraid to disclose how they uh, how they store user passwords. The same thing goes for for one password. They are also not afraid to tell us what they do to the user passwords. They have released um, 60 pages long PDF, which completely describes the security design of the um, one password for teams and one password for families, which is really nice. And 1Password is also doing a really nice thing. They are sending Jeff to Las Vegas every time, every single year. I don't know why, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Get rid of me. Get yeah. <laughs> okay. So there are also some other nice companies and, and smaller services which are doing the same thing. They are disclosing how exactly do they store user passwords. And um, one nice example is Scott Helmes report URI. Report.io, which is a service, which is a really nice service for aggregating um, content security policy reports and HTTP public keeping reports. Really nice service for doing that. And he's got this information, this important information, which says, want to know our password hashing policies? Sure, check out our uh, frequently asked questions. So he's got this on a login page and on a sign up page as well, right next to the, um, to the, to the field where you enter your password. Right there, it's just there, which is really nice. And these companies, you know, Facebook's got a lot of private data, uh, LastPass, well, probably as well. Um, the same thing goes for the, for the service. Uh, they got a lot of, um, a lot of reports of, from content security policies. So uh, they are not afraid to disclose um, what the how do they uh, store user passwords. There are more companies like this. 
And I have actually started collecting them. You know, some people collect you know, empty beer cans and stuff like this. So I collect sides. Um, this is my side. Um, I call it you know, michalaspachi.cz, and um, you can find there a link to, to, to a subdomain called Pulse. I have uh, several sites of there. I will just show, this, show the site in a few seconds. Um, uh, it's, it's supposed to be a part of the bigger survey of the internet. That's why I call it Pulse, because I got heavily inspired by a work from uh, 18F, which is a US government something. And they scan uh, US government websites, and they just publish the score, how, uh, you know, uh, how good the encryption is there and everything. So I want to do something similar, but um, I'm just a single, um, you know, uh, one man show. This is a one man show only, so it takes more time. But let's just move on. Um, so this is why it co it's called Pools, because they call it Pools as well. So I got really, really heavily inspired by that. Um, the site looks like this. Um, so I think I, right now I have only 20 companies, because it's not that easy to you know, get official information on how companies store passwords. But so if you look at the site, um, here I have the company which is called Datadoc, and a site apedatadochq.com. They have disclosed that they use bcrypt for storing the passwords. So there is more sites like this. Some of them are Czech because um, I'm from Czech Republic, so um, I'm asking the companies directly, and they know that they should tell me because otherwise I'll just you know um, make a public PR for them really bad. So uh, yeah, here are the companies and the sites and the um, algorithms they use. I also came up with the rating system of how good they are. So Datadoc is rated B. Uh, this company is rated F. Well, we will learn um, why. So um, wherever I have more details about the company or about the, um, uh, the password hashing policy they use, so I also try to put it on the side. So here I have a Czech company which I was working for in, in 2014. So uh, we made a talk about uh, what we do to our user passwords. and. Um, you can find it on, also on my site that um, we use, or the company uses Bcrypt, and the cost is 10, and they also do some encryption on the hashes, and uh, they have disclosed it on, on a Twitter and in a talk. Um, every time I put something into this site, into my site, uh, it must be already a public information. I don't put anything um, like, uh, you know, because sometimes you learn how the companies are storing passwords just by doing let's say, penetration tests. Um, so I don't put it there. It must already be a public information. Somebody already must have disclosed it somewhere in a talk, on, on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, or in a, in a docs, or somewhere. So every time I just put there a disclosure and link to disclosures. I also uh, make the uh, snapshot of the, of, the, of the disclosure so that uh, if they later think that it was not a good thing to, to disclose, it's still on the internet, and it will stay on the internet. Um, yeah. Uh, so a bit about the rating system I've come up with. Um, yeah, uh, the rating system works like this. Um, if you want to score, or if the company wants to score a really nice grade in, in, my, uh, in my rating system, uh, it needs to use a slow hashes. That means bcrypt, scrypt, uh, pb, key, the, that thing, and, or argon2. Uh, I call it slow hashes right now, just for the lack of uh, better naming. And if you want to score really perfect, um, a really perfect grade like A, you also have to disclose that in your docs. Because uh, if you disclose it somewhere in a talk or, or on, on, in a blog post or on a Facebook or on Twitter, it's, it's hidden. Nobody will, look it, um, nobody will look for it there because you know, um, the blog posts, they just you know, disappear in time. Also, that's true for Twitter and Facebook posts. So if you want to score, if the company wants to score a perfect, uh, perfect grade, they just need to tell us uh, you know, right in the docs. Because uh, that's probably where everyone if you are looking for the information, that's probably where you want to look. Uh, where you want to look at, um, you will probably not go through the blog or, or um, Facebook or Twitter. So that's why some of the companies, even if they use Bcrypt, they have they, they have B, uh, they have grade B because they just tell us in a, in a talk and not not that officially. Um, then there are other hashes um, like you know show one, two, show three, and, and, and other hashes MD5 and 
if the company uses something like that, MD5 or show one, show two, uh, and they at least salt it and stretch it, and it means they do several iterations of that, they score C. Um, or if they just salt the hash, they score D. And if they just, just use plain MD5 or plain show one or something like that, uh, they score E. Or if they encrypt the passwords, they just don't hash it. Or if they encrypt it, they just score E. Um, it could be worse, and yeah. It could be worse. F is for fail, and that's plain text. There are some companies who are storing plain text as well, unfortunately. So um, A and B are somehow safe. Um, C, D, E, C could be safe as well, but uh, we are not sure. So these ones are not really nice, and this is um, not nice at all. So sharing is caring, but some don't care, so they don't share. Uh, so is it okay to, to share or disclose um, the, the, the password hashing policy for the company? Well, I think, yeah, I think it is okay. Especially if the company uses, um, you know, bcrypt or scrypt or, or, fun or hashing functions designed to store user passwords. If they don't use functions designed to store user passwords, like MD5 or I don't know, show one or something, um, it's better for them to fix that, to use something better, and then they can disclose it. Because, um, yeah, there is no point in not disclosing that. If it's, if it's Facebook and, and LastPass and, and OnePass for disclosing what they do to the passwords, you know, there's no point in, in hiding that. So um, some companies are afraid that if they disclose what they do to the user passwords, that they will get hacked, that they will, get, that they will become a target. Well, um, I have big, I have, <laughs> Bad news for them. They already are a target. <laughs> and I'm not talking about target the company. Well, so uh, this is a data doc. I have data doc on my screenshot somewhere here. I think, yeah, they scored B because they use, uh, they use bcrypt. And um, they, have, they use bcrypt and they have been using bcrypt even, uh, even before the data breach they have suffered like I think a month ago. So they were using bcrypt and they, they got hacked as well. So um, it doesn't really matter how the company is storing the passwords because um, companies get hacked and they will get hacked even if they just use whatever they use. Um, it, it's, it's worse if they use plain text or MD5 or plain show one or something like that, but uh, they will still get hacked. There is another company who got hacked uh, uh, even if they were using bcrypt and that's called Ashley Madison. But I think that the, uh, the motivation for hacking Ashley Madison was completely different than, uh, than user passwords. But still, even if they disclose what they use, uh, they get hacked. And even if they don't, I think that Datadog didn't disclose before they get hacked, and they still get hacked. So, yeah. uh, There are some tricks um, for the users how they can actually um, investigate how the company is storing the user passwords. Um, one of the tricks is, is here, it's, uh, it's exploiting the PHP's feature of uh, comparing two strings. So it works like this. Uh, if you are able to sign up to a site with the passwords 2406 something like that, blah, 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 and then you are able to log into the site with this password, Q and Q or something, then uh, you can be pretty sure that the company is using plain MD5 to store the user passwords. Even without uh, the company telling us, well, so this trick works like this. Um, the hash of 240 something something uh, is, uh, starts with 0E, and then there are some more letters. Uh, the same thing goes for MD5 uh, from Q and blah, blah, blah. The hash is also 0E and something. For PHP, if you take uh, two strings, which start with 0E and then something, then PHP compares them as zeros. Because it's, it thinks that it's zero exponent something like this. So, so they just compare, PHP compares it as zeros. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's possible to detect the password uh, hashing policy if you are able to sign up with this password and then log in with this one. Uh, there are more examples like this. Um, it works also for show one and for plain text as well. Uh, I got them on my GitHub and uh, you can try that. Uh, if, it's, uh, if it doesn't work, 
it doesn't mean that the company is not using MD5. They can be doing something else, like you know, they can just uh, they can be comparing the strings with uh, three equal signs, not just two. But um, if it works, then it's MD5 definitely. And I have found one side um, who one side storing passwords in plain text just using this uh, or a similar trick. So even the users can do detection themselves. They just don't need the, the company to disclose that. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So does that mean that? Uh, I'm afraid, yeah, it yeah. needs. So does that mean that one in 256 passwords is, is a subject? Because, it, I mean, one in 256 yeah. hashes would begin um, with zero E if, if they're if they're comparing this way, this is yeah, really bad. Yeah, but it depends on how they are comparing that. If they will be comparing that with the three equal signs, then this doesn't work. But um, I think that anyone who uses MD5 is already comparing just with two equal signs. Um, or they can be just you know uh, fetching the data from the database in a different way. But if they are using uh, two equal signs here, uh, then yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes, they need to be. Yeah, it needs to be hexadecimal string. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes you can just use it. Uh, the slides can be made available online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone else? Can I go to the next slide right now? <laughs> just asking. So. Um, even if the um, you know uh, people are able to tell what the hash is just by looking at the hash. So if the database leaks, then um, you just look at the hashes and you are pretty sure that you know this is not a bcrypt. Who thinks this is a bcrypt hash? Oh, great. <laughs> so this is MD5. So just by looking at the hash, you will know that this is MD5 or show one or or, or a bcrypt hash or something like that. So uh, if, if, if the company gets hacked, there is no point in not telling us what exactly they were using for storing the, um, the user passwords. There is a nice example um, from Anthony Ferrara, who has done this. Um, he wrote an application, hashguesserupspot.com, and uh, he tried to prove that you know, security through obscurity doesn't work. He has done that, um, yeah, he gave the users uh, two passwords. One is password, the other one is Apple. He gave them two salts per the password, and he gave them a resulting hash. What, he, what the site was missing were the exact algorithms, how the hash was calculated. So he just gave the users passwords and the salts and the resulting hash. And uh, he gave the users, I think it was 15 different algorithms like this. And um, the goal was to come up with the hash of a password foo and salt bar 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 without actually knowing the algorithm. So you had to reverse the algorithm, the, the hashing algorithm. You had to reverse that and calculate a new hash for, for a new password just by looking at the hash and knowing uh, passwords and salts. Well, that's quite um, interesting. Well, the results were really uh, nice. So there were people, I think it was 15 algorithms in total, and there were 14 people, uh, sorry, uh, there were three people who have found 14 of the algorithms just by looking at the hashes, just by looking at the hashes and trying to calculate the passwords and, and everything. There was one guy, Matthias Glaub, who has actually hacked the app <laughs> and made the, made the app and made, made the server leak the algorithms somehow. <laughs> so he found a misconfiguration, but he was able to, to generate all the 15, 15 algorithms. So just by looking at the hashes, people are able to reverse that, even if the algorithm is more, uh, uh, more even if the algorithm is different than just plain MD5 or something. Uh, Antony was doing some really weird things to the, to the passwords, like you know making them reverse and, and stuff like this. I, I will just not disclose any details if you want to try that. Just go ahead. Uh, so just by looking at the hashes, even if they are not plain MD5 or plain show one, just people are looking, uh, people are able to 
reverse that quite easily. Um, if any site is using any open source software, they are actually disclosing by, by design. They don't need to even tell us because you know, open source software is just open source, so, uh, so people can look at that and just um, tell how exactly the site is storing user passwords. Uh, also, open source software makes it quite easy to fix actually security bugs in, uh, a <coughs> in password storage. Uh, I have one example here. Uh, this is um, PrestaShop. They were using <coughs> they were using plain MD5 to store user passwords. Uh, actually, they they were using salt as well, but it was a static salt. It was a salt in a configuration, so the salt was the, for, so the salt was the same for uh, all the user passwords. And somebody told them that hey, you you guys should switch to Bcrypt from M MD5. So they did that. <laughs> uh, they did it like this. Uh, they were calling password hash, which is a PHP function to calculate the bcrypt hash, and they prepended uh, salt uh, to the user password. The thing is that the salt was uh, 56 characters long, and you know bcrypt is trimming the passwords at 72 characters. So 72 minus 56, uh, I think it's something around 16 maybe. So they were actually truncating user passwords at 16 characters without you know, even telling the users. Uh, this was a security issue. Um, I was able to fix that just by looking at the code and you know, making a pull request, just fixing it in, in, in a few minutes. So uh, that's what I like on, on uh, open source, that you can actually fix simple things, or not that simple, quite important things, like really, really easily. Um, they got more issues here, like you know, they call it bcrypt shop two five six for whatever reason, and they just call it encrypt, not hash. But I have fixed that in in uh, in next revisions, so that's fixed as well. Um, so yeah. Uh, so I think that it's okay to disclose uh, how the company is actually storing passwords, because uh, uh, the company doesn't need to be afraid. There are other companies disclosing passwords like Facebook and, and Twitter as well. And just look at my sites, there are some nice companies. And it's okay to disclose how the company is storing the user passwords, especially if the site uses um, so-called password hashes, bcrypt, script, uh, pbkey, something, and uh, argon2. And if, this, if the site is not using any of these uh, special password hashes, they should just fix that and then disclose. And they should definitely let me know so that I can put them on my site. Because I think that uh, if they appear on my site with a uh, nice grade, that uh, the users will love it more because they can feel more you know, confident that the company um, knows what they are doing and stuff like this. Uh, even if the company is using you know, um, hashes like MD5 and they switch to Bcrypt, um, the users will quite love it because they were like, oh yeah, you were doing something wrong before. But right now, you are doing something nice, and you are not afraid to tell us that you screwed up before. So yeah, I've been there and done that as well. Um, so I think it's OK to disclose, uh, uh, especially if the company is using slow password hashes. And yeah, that's it from me, I think. Yeah, there are some questions. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Questions, Arnold? One quick question. In, in your A and B reading, uh, ratings, yeah. it wasn't so clear from the slide. Yeah, are you requiring SALT for the A and B readings? Uh, sorry, are you requiring? Are you requiring SALT uh, for the A and B ratings? Yeah, because all the, all the algorithms like Bcrypt, Scrypt, uh, and the other ones, they, all, they already require the SALT. So yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Oh, Jeff. Okay. Uh, just a simple one. Um, are you familiar with plain text offenders? Yeah, I am. Okay, yeah, I'm I am. just wondering whether you yeah, kind of um, cross. I'm, I want to take it to a slightly different direction because plain text of, uh, offenders is more like uh, just a shaming, but I want, also want to you know, thank the companies for doing a great job. So yeah, I'm, I know them, yeah. Um, uh, you know, you said it's, it's, it's possible to tell the difference between different hashes, but can you tell the difference between just looking at the hash of something mm -hmm. without the password of what's an S crypt, what's a B crypt, and what's using PBKDF two mm -hmm. or three, is it possible to oh, tell those apart? Uh, most of the times, yeah, because B crypt usually starts with uh, dollar sign to something dollar sign, so that's a B crypt. The S crypt is slightly longer, and yeah, sometimes it is possible. Oh, it is I think it's most of the times, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 
it, it probably if it would be encrypted, or oh, encrypted, I'm sorry, encoded to Base64, it could take some more time, but I think that it's possible, yeah. More questions? Your uh, Pulse project, is it possible to contribute or is it closed? Is yeah, it definitely. Open? It's required to contribute. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's mandatory to contribute. And, and how do we do that? Uh, just tweet me or send me an email uh, to a link to um, public disclosure. Because Scott I think. Bills in his shorts. <laughs> uh, Bruce from Password Research already done that. They, he sent me like three links to, to sites who are actually disclosing there is a password. So, yeah, it's mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot do this alone. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. You know, this, this has been an ongoing discussion for many years at Passwords.com. We are still fighting to, to make companies to disclose yep. how they are storing your passwords. And in my own personal opinion on this is basically that, uh, you know, if they don't want to disclose, you should just, you know, as expect the worst. As well, expect yeah. the worst. Yeah. Uh, it's like either you can be on, on the good list or, or you, uh, I will put you on the shit list. <laughs> it's, it, it's that simple. Uh, I, will, or, I will probably rename my project. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I mean, over and over again, for every new leak we see, we see unsolved MD5 still going on, we still see uh, unsolved SHA-1, and we see all kinds of bad implementations. It's like somebody, I'm not going to say who, if it, if it is board of directors or, or if, 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 if it is the developers, but somebody is just not watching the news for the past <laughs> 10, 15 years about all the leaks. It's like, oh, there's a leak. Well, the obvious question anybody on the survey on the board of directors should be asking their own organization is, how do we store our customers' passwords? They don't. They don't no. ask those questions. They just assume, well, we're not stupid, so this is no, ne never going to happen to us. And we need to change that. So again, thank you. Maybe uh, one remark. Uh, I was talking about Ashley Medicine, that they are storing passwords in Bcrypt, but they have um, done something really bad to the passwords as well. They were storing them also in MD5, like besides the Bcrypt passwords. So uh, if the company scores uh, A or B, because they tell us that they store passwords in Bcrypt, they can. Uh, they still have a lot of opportunities to screw up. But uh, this is not possible to verify. Um, we just need to trust them. If they tell us that they use Bcrypt, we just need to trust them that they use the Bcrypt. So uh, it's not really possible to verify it without hacking the company, and I'm not going there. So. <laughs> yeah. And if you're interested in the Ashley Madison case as well, Sunosha uh, uh, Prime, which is one of the really good groups doing password cracking for Crack Me If You Can and, and, and other uh, password hashing uh, cracking competitions. They did a talk at PasswordsCon at the University of Cambridge in UK last year where they talk about the, well, the, how Ashley Madison had done pretty much everything wrong in their password implementation. So initially, Bcrypt, oh, look, looks good. And then, you know, kaboom. Okay, so we're going to take a break until 12. Uh, and the next speaker up is Bruce Marshall, who will also do a really uh, uh, interesting talk about how you should be proactively handling password breaches from other sites to your benefit, pretty much. So back again at 12. Thank you. Okay, thank you.